In this video, I'm going to show you the old decisive game of the Granke Chess Classic. It's the final between Magnus Carlsen and Richard Rapport. And in game one, Magnus managed to win a very spectacular game. It's covered in my previous video, so you can check it out over there. And if you like all the other videos of the Granke Chess Classic, make sure to subscribe to the channel as well. Now it's time to have a look at this critical game. Magnus is playing with a black piece. So here, Richard Rapport is in a must-win situation. He needs to play for a win. And, uh, well, that's, of course, never easy, but especially not when you're facing world's number one. Let's see how Rapport starts the game. As he goes for the move 1e4. That's not a surprise, because in the group stage, in the very first game of the tournament, Rapport also played that move. And in that game, Magnus went for the Karakan, but was uh, suffering throughout that game and eventually went on to lose. So now he goes back to a more solid, more reliable option, e5. Knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, knight f6, the Italian opening, and Rapport goes for the move d3. We get a so-called so sort of a slow Italian, bishop uh, c5, knight c3, h6, played castling kingside, d6, all pretty standard. And uh, Rapport is just trying to grab the bishop pair by going after that the bishop on uh, c5. The bishop goes back to b6, and here he plays the move a3. I mean, um, this has been played before. It's very, very subtle uh, pawn play. I'm also not familiar with all the ins and outs of that uh, particular uh, setup. Uh, but anyway, it's uh, just a way to get a playable position. And probably it's also caught Magnus a bit by surprise. At least probably he didn't expect it for, uh, for this game. Even though in an earlier game he just castled here, which is a uh, perfectly, uh, perfectly fine uh, move. And in fact, uh, the move castling kingside is also covered earlier on the channel in a game uh, played last year between Jordan van Verheist and uh, Anish Giri when they uh, met each other in the final of the Dutch uh, Championship. So you can also check it out um, elsewhere on, uh, on the channel. Anyway, Magnus for this occasion goes for the move bishop uh, g4, pins the... Knight on f3, so knight d4 is a very typical move, and therefore c3 is uh, played here to uh, take away that uh, square from the black knight. And here, first interesting moment of the game, I would say. Queen c8, so what is this queen going to do? Probably you're just discouraging uh, white here from uh, playing a move like a3, because then you always got to reckon with these kind of bishop uh, sacrifices when black is getting two pawns for the, um, for the piece. In any case... Knight takes b6 is played. You want to get rid of that uh, powerful bishop. So black recaptures with the a pawn. And now bishop goes to uh, b3. Very solid move. And uh, well, now the, the bishop pair is usually going to be worth something uh, later on. When the position will be opened. So next uh, part of um, white's plan is to find a way to open up uh, that position by introduce a pawn break. Various options here. Castling kingside is still a possibility, but Magnus wants to play for some sort of kingside attack. It seems like he played move knight e7 with the idea to get a knight over to um, to g6. But now h3 is uh, is a very sensible move. I, I think that these kind of sacrifices on on h3 they're not really going to work out because there's always something like knight h2 and then the, the queen will come to f3. So that's no longer. Uh, uh, really uh, a problem for um, for um, for white at all. So therefore, black decides to uh, drop back with the bishop to uh, to e6. That's understandable. Uh, trying to uh, aim for exchanges. White gives a check here with the bishop on a4. It's defended by the queen. Bishop goes back to d7. And now white drops back with the bishop to c2. So next is likely going to be uh, the move d4 to uh, to put a bit more pressure uh, against the pawn on e5. So the knight comes over to uh, to g6. And uh, it looks as if your uh, knight is doing well over protecting the pawn on e5. And rather than advancing the pawn to d4, look at this, knight to h2. I think this is a very important move which helps white to seize the initiative. After castling kingside, finally that move is played. But now, white played a move f4. This is the typical move, the main idea of dropping back with the knight, as now you're opening up the f-file for the, for the rook. Pawn takes, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes. And I think white can be very, very satisfied with the outcome of the opening. Why? Well, first of all, you do have 
an extra pawn in the center. You do have a beautiful rook on uh, f4. Queen goes back to d8. So that entire setup with queen c8 it didn't work out for black hat uh, at all. And now white mobilizes its uh, center. Pawns on d4 and e4. And what should black do? Not really clear how to try to uh, generate some counterplay. Well, in the game there followed rook a5. Creative way of uh, trying to get the rook involved. So the rook is on its way to g5 probably. But here is the move queen d3. So you see that bishop and queen are forming a nice team. Looking for opportunities to open up that diagonal. And, uh, well, for instance, if um, if black plays a move like, uh, like rook e8, I, I think you're just going to continue with rook af1. And things are looking fantastic for white. I mean, all white's pieces are looking in the direction of the, of the black king. So, instead, Magnus uh, felt like he's under huge pressure. Decided to play here the move d5. Very typical response against such a pawn duo in the center. With the idea that after e5 the knight can be installed on uh, on e4 and probably next will be f5. Probably white is better in that case as well. But the move played by Rapport is way stronger. As he just captures the pawn on d5. Why not capture a pawn if you can do that? It, it also opens up this diagonal for queen and bishop. If you take with the knight it's checkmate in one on h7. And if you do take with the rook first. Well then the only thing you gotta do is eliminate the defender of the uh, h7 square. Rook takes f6, queen takes and boom checkmate. So black's idea here was to close this diagonal first with the move g6. But your pawn up and you can simply defend the pawn with the move c4. Magnus goes for the move b5 and there are various options here. You can take on b5, you can advance the pawn, you can protect it. But it's all about Black's, uh, the safety of Black's king. So rook a to f1. Very good move attacking that knight on f6. And there's no time for the intermediate move pawn takes c4, attacking the queen, because the queen goes to f3 now. Three pieces are hitting that knight on f6. And if the knight, for instance, takes on uh, d5, it's rook takes f7, and black's king side is falling apart. So there's no time for that. Black instead played here the move rook a6. So you see that every time Magnus need to uh, adjust to the to the new uh, situation and uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a clear sign that his entire game plan has just uh, backfired from the from the very start and uh, white continues playing very uh, very powerfully here with the move queen f3 so the queen hits the knight on f6 king g7 so knight is three times attacked three times defended but with the next move, key move here is d6. White is giving back the pawn. Very important moment. So you're closing the sixth rank. So you're ready to take on f6. Only move is rook takes d6. But now white is able to stabilize the situation in the center. You're hitting the rook on d6. If the rook goes away, you can continue with the move d5. And then on the next move, we reintroduce this idea of d6 to interfere along the 6th rank. And there's no good way for black to keep the knight supported. If knight goes away, then the pressure against the pawn on f7 is uh, decisive. So after c5, black played here. The move bishop c6, counterattacking the bishop. Uh, with the bishop, the, the queen on f3. Queen goes back to f2. Rook goes to e6. Everything is still under control. At least that's that's how it looks like. But in fact, the position is still quite bad. And well, there, there are various ways of, of playing. Machine really likes this move, knight g4, with the idea that after knight takes, you can first take on f7 before taking the knight. And if you play anything else like queen e7, I guess that was Magnus' in, intention in case of knight g4. There is knight takes f6, winning a piece, but there is rook e2 with counterplay. If the queen goes away, the pawn on g2 can be taken. However, after doing so, you uh, give up the queen for the rook and the bishop. And then in the end, white is having tremendous play for the queen. In fact, he's even material up with this fantastic uh, piece uh, trio. It's uh, clearly stronger than the queen in, uh, in that case. But when you have such a great advantage, you normally don't want to uh, stir things up. Um, you rather keep the material balance uh, intact. So the move played, bishop b3, very understandable move. Now, 
the rook is under threat. If you do play bishop d5, you can simply take it. If you do take with the queen, then the knight on f6 is taken. If the knight takes on d5, it's rook takes f7, game over. So the rook cannot go away, then the knight on f6 will be taken. g5, Magnus is fighting back here with this move, hitting the rook. Rook goes to f5. So the problems are still there. Rook cannot go away. But bishop e4, counterattacking. The rook on f5. And after bishop takes e6, of course, no time to take on uh, f5. After bishop takes f5, white is just a full piece up. So black just takes back on e6. Hitting the rook on f5. The rook goes to e5. Hits the bishop. Bishop goes to d3. And uh, it hits the rook on f1. And, um, well, a very logical move here would be to, uh, to move the rook away, which was played by Rapport uh, at this point. Rook d1. However... It's probably better to make things more clearer again with rook takes e6 after bishop takes f1, knight takes f1. White is a very healthy pawn up. The knight will come in to g3 and target weak squares. Overwhelming advantage here for, uh, for white. But rook d1 is played, hitting the bishop on d3. But look now, Magnus continues playing very uh, straightforward with, uh, with the move knight g4, hitting both the queen and the rook. Also discovered attack, so white is forced here to take on g4. And after rook takes f2, knight takes f2. Now we have the situation with um, two rooks for the queen. And the bishop is also under threat. So there are serious problems here. Um, should be said also that queen takes d4 can, um, can just be met here. Uh, you're attacking the rook and you're pinning the knight on f2 but there is rook e4 that is the uh, the killer move if you take the rook there's rook takes d4 winning the queen if queen goes away you take with the rook on d3 and you're also up an extra piece so don't do that black gotta move the bishop maybe to f5 maybe to c4 at least to protect the pawn bishop c4 played by magnus and it's clear that white is in the driver's seat here i mean he he's absolutely safe with its king it's just a matter of time until the rooks are starting to work together bishop b3 Tickling the, the rook on d1. If the rook goes away, d4 will be hanging. So rook d2. And here, I'm actually very surprised with the move uh, played by Marcus. I mean, black's position is pretty bad. But I would just try to play solidly here. And I know that white has uh, various ways to keep trying to improve its position. But after the move h5, you're also weakening your own position. I mean, the, the knight is on the thread, but the knight goes away. But there is bishop d5. This is what Magnus played, but... Probably he underestimated this move, knight e4, because you're threatening to take the pawn on g5. So black is kind of forced here to take on e4, but having traded off that bishop for the knight, white's position becomes much easier to uh, to handle. And uh, very soon the rooks will be connected, go after the isolated pawn on e6 or the, the vulnerable pawns on the fifth rank. But okay, probably Magnus um, consciously went for this uh, line looking for counterplay. Believing that is its best way of uh, trying to uh, to stay in the game. He played g4. And after pawn takes g4, he goes for queen to g5. I'm not sure. I don't like this set uh, at all for uh, for black. And uh, Rapport just played rook de2. Very solid uh, move. There are other good options as well. For instance, rook f2. With the idea that after pawn takes g4, rook ff4. And you're going to take on, uh, on g4 next. But... Basically, Rapport has the same idea. He is not in a rush. He connects the rook first. And um, he may take on e6, but there's always something like g3. And then the, the white king is, is kind of stuck at the back rank. That offers black very good practical chances for uh, counterplay against the king. So, nice technical move here is g3. After queen f5, looking for counterplay, you go for the move rook to f4. Queen to d3. Attacking the rook, attacking the pawn. So king f2 played, queen 2 b3. And well, first you take this little pawn with check. You go back to f4, everything is protected. King g7, rook e4, attacking another pawn. Queen to d3. If you now take on e6, that, well, there's always this uh, move queen takes d4 with check. So here, king g2 is played, c6. And well, there's always this possibility. But the more pawns are coming off the board, you're kind of helping the, the weaker side, trying to, to save this uh, position. And how should Y2 try to make uh, progress here? Well, I'm believing that a good plan would be trying to activate the king, 
together with the pawn and then at some point try to take on e6 at the right moment and if your king and pawn are up here let's say and you have two rooks which are able to give checks then you have very good chances to to create some sort of a mating net with the eight of uh, your king and pawn so in my opinion that is the the most technical way trying to to convert but rapport played rook g4 and don't forget the players are getting lower on time at uh, at this point so rook check king f7 rook f2 king e7 rook g7 king e8 and here rook g f7 played and well the plan is very clear that if you take the pawn then there is another mating net discovered by the rooks as now it's checkmate as the pawn on c5 prevents the king from escaping but magnus sensed very well that his only chance to keep trying here keep fighting is this move e5 so that now after all these checks the, the king is able to run away d takes e5 queen d5 check king h2 then you're completely busted here as black i mean you cannot take on e5 let it be clear because of rook f8 other rook comes to f7 and after king e6 you go rook e8 and you pick up the queen so queen takes e5 was the move played in the game now rook to um to f5 defending the pawn so white is having two past pawns queen e3 king h3 king e7 but i mean white is hesitating here at, at this point what should he do should he play for mate should he try to win the queen should he promote one of the pawns rapport couldn't really decide getting lower on time he played rook f7 check king e8 rook f8 king e7 rook check king e6 rook there once again you cannot take the pawn because of this uh, skewer winning the queen so king goes to d5 and here still playing e6 makes a lot of sense just to keep that nice little pawn you're only two squares away from from creening your pawn but rook d8 played and after king c4 now e6 is played but here the rooks are no longer connected queen e5 is an excellent defensive resource hitting the rook rook goes to f4 and um well not uh, not sure where the king should go it's understandable that the king goes to b3 maybe king c5 could also have been played here uh, with the idea that after b4 check king b6 now this pawn on e6 can no longer be defended because rook e8 rook is unprotected and that's where the queen comes in its strength it's a double attack winning the rook so magnus he didn't go for this chance he he played king b3 he, he wanted to eliminate this pawn which is very understandable rook d3 check and before uh, taking that uh, that pawn uh, king c2 played and uh, here rook d to f3 now queen takes e6 pawn number one is uh, eliminated and after uh, solving the check with the move g4 king takes b2 and okay white should still be in in good shape you may think but it's not so easy to advance the pawn uh, now because it's pinned and also black all of a sudden does have great counter chances with the c pawn king goes back to to g2 now queen e2 is always met by rook f2 you're losing the queen so black plays c5 rook g3 so the rook is getting behind this pawn and who is better here well absolutely not clear but black should just run with its c pawn why did magnus not play that move not not obvious at all i i think if you make a race out of it with g5 and then c3 g6 c2 it's uh, it's clear that black is also having a counterplay here so things are far from uh, far from clear here rook f2 trying to pin this uh, pawn there's queen e4 there are a bunch of checks and it's so difficult to coordinate your forces because white also got to deal with that uh, c pawn so i think black should have gone for it he played queen d5 magnus it's check but now after king h2 the problem is that it's uh, it's not so easy queen e5 rook f2 check king goes to the first rank and now white misses a great and very simple plan why not why not on earth just run with his pawn we are waiting it for for a long time finally you can do it i'm i'm absolutely mystified with uh, with this move i mean being short of time i would definitely have played it and you're faster because if black is gonna run g6 c3 g7 c2 you're promoting first and if black promotes then it's checkmate on a2 of course when you're promoting first you know that you have the initiative so after g5 there are still different ways of, of playing but if you cannot run 
you got to do something about stopping the pawn, but the queen is really needed to keep the, the rook pinned. If, if the queen goes, let's say, somewhere to, to g7 at some point, then there is always ladder mate on these first two ranks. So here you see that white is just winning, but rook f1 played, king c2, rook f2, repeating the moves just with the aim of, of gaining some time. King comes closer and still something like g5 is possible, but here Rappert went for king h3, but now King e1, fantastic idea, hitting the rook on e1, forcing the rook to go to an inferior square, rook f5 played, and uh, now various various interesting uh, options. I, I think queen e7 is, uh, is a great idea, with the point that if you push the pawn, then queen e6 pinning is one of the, the main uh, main aspects of this queen in this in this endgame, just to tie down the rooks, making it much harder for white to uh, to advance the pawn. But Magnus played queen e4, setting up a little trap. Cannot really call it a trap, preventing rook takes c5 because of checkmate in the corner. So instead, rook g1 was played to to neutralize that threat. But you're giving a check. The king goes to e2. Still, the pawn on c5 cannot be taken because of queen e3 with a double attack, white is going to lose a rook. So you can't do that. Rook g2 is played, king e1. But how are you going to make progress? You cannot take on c5. You cannot advance your pawns. You know that if you move the rook, maybe there will follow a bunch of checks. And black also has this counterplay with its c-pawn. So here, desperately here, Rapport had to uh, accept that he doesn't have anything better than just um, repeating the, the moves. And that means that Magnus Carlsen wins. The Granka Chess Classic. And that was Magnus Houdini Carlsen. This was one of the greatest escapes from the tournament. In the final even. Absolutely amazing escape from the best player in the world. Who absolutely deserved to win this uh, tournament. He was by far the best player in the group stage. Played some very enterprising chess after a slow start. He was crushing the entire field. And then in the final, he, he won his game beautifully with the white pieces, as I said in, in, in the other game I covered earlier. Um, so that, that was very impressive. Today, in the second game, it was not, not Magnus at his best. But what can you expect? I mean, the guys, they, they played so many games, 12 games in total this tournament. There are some bad moments even for the worst, uh, for the best players in the world. Don't let me uh, call Magnus the worst player. Don't don't get me wrong, guys. So um, anyway, I I hope you you thought uh, this to be a, a very instructive game. Nice coverage. Let me know in the comments what you think of it. This was the Grand Chess Classic 2024. I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for many more exciting games to be covered. On, uh, on this channel as the candidates tournament is starting later this uh, week. So definitely I will see you there. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.